Yo, what's good YouTube? I'm back with another reaction video and we got Wale Bird with Destroy Today's NBA. Now this this I was gonna say this game. This video came out a day ago, so you know I definitely gotta react to it, man. You know it's definitely new. So we definitely about to get straight into this video, man. Deeply appreciate all of the support to y'all. But uh yeah, we about to get straight into it, man. Subscribe if you're new, hit that like button, man, turn on that bell. I'm uploading every single day. And uh, yeah, we about to get straight into this video, y'all. Definitely excited about this, man. Hope everybody's having a good night and a good day where you at. But uh, yeah, let's get straight into this video, man. This is definitely a new one right here. Definitely a new one. So let's check it out. What if I told you if past NBA players could play today, the most dominant player wouldn't be Michael Jordan, Kareem, Wilt, or even the big diesel himself, Shaquille O'Neal. Instead, it would be Larry Bird one of the greatest scorers of all time. I know, I know, that is a very controversial statement. So let me explain. Larry Bird was an exceptional player, way beyond his years. His game was made perfectly for today's NBA, especially his ability to hit outside shots. Bird won three consecutive three-point contests between 1986 and 1988. What was historic about that was he won the contest while still wearing his warm-up jacket and he even held up his hand on the last shot before the ball even went through the net. Yeah, he was Steph Curry before Curry, basically. Keep in mind, during this era, shooting threes wasn't nearly as attractive as it is today. It's important to note that he didn't take many threes. In fact, his highest number of three-point attempts was just 3.3. To put that in perspective of today's NBA, Stephen Curry attempts 11 threes per game. Desmond Bain attempts seven, Damian Lillard attempts 11, Jason Tatum attempts 9, LeBron attempts 7, and even the greatest shooter of all time, Dylan Brooks, attempts 6. So could you imagine Bird attempting an extra 5, 6, or 7 more? Dylan Brooks, the greatest shooter of all time? Uh, what, now? Today or what? I'm lost in kind of in today's NBA. I might have to look that up. I don't know. Threes per game? He was already averaging 20 points for his entire on low volume. On high volume, things would get a little scary for opposing teams. He was a versatile shooter as well. He was a masterful catch and shoot threat while also being able to just pull up with a defender in his face, similar to how we see elite shooters today shoot. It also helped that he was 6 foot 9 and had clear height advantage on almost any wing defender who was guarding him on the perimeter. What's iconic about him being one of the best shooters ever is that he never really focused on practicing threes. He knew confidently that he could win ball games with or without shooting from behind the arc. He even said this in an interview with Celtics legend and Bird's former teammate, Kevin McHale. You know, Kevin, we never really worked on it. I mean, we wouldn't even guard guys beyond the three-point line. We would stay away underneath. Go under every pick? I can remember Danny Ainge talking about using it back then and he thought you could shoot 35, 36 from the field from threes and do better if you shot 50%, you know, from the twos, said Bird. What's even crazier is that even after retirement, he had kept the shooting stroke that had won him hundreds of games and three-point contests. Former Pacer Lance Stevenson told a story on just how skilled he was. So we're stretching, right? The whole team is just stretching and Larry just walks onto the court grabs the ball and started jacking threes. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. I'm like, I'm looking at everybody. Do y'all see this right now? He made at least 10 in a row of threes. Just walked in, came in, looking at us stretching and hit 10 threes in a row. Walked off and then sat like he ain't do nothing. I like, yo, this guy is nice. That's a legend right there. So, okay, we know that Bird was an incredible shooter, which would obviously translate to today's game. But what other skills does he have in his arsenal? The answer to that is his playmaking ability. Larry Bird has a strong argument for being an even better passer than the king himself, LeBron James. He had unreal court vision and, and an advanced understanding of the opposing defense. The only player today who could do what he did as a passer is of course LeBron. What really separated the two is that LeBron is basically just a gigantic point guard. Bird was a typical forward who just happened to have the ability. Most of Bird's assets and flashy dimes came either in transition or in the post area. He wasn't much of a pick and roll maestro like James, therefore Bird was more like a more accurate and flashy DeMontis Sabonis in a way. He averaged over 7 assists per game 3 times and averaged over 6 assists 5 times. 
Bird was the type of player that if he played today, he would be posted on every sports social site on a nightly basis. The passes he could make were out of this world. He would find the open player no matter the situation. He was the teammate every player in the world would love to have on their team. A true genius and wizard with the ball. Larry Legend was a jack of all trades. Not only could he shoot and pass the rock like no other, but he was also an elite rebounder which made him a double-double and triple-double machine. He's actually ninth all-time in triple-doubles and we all know how players today love those. Players like Russell Westbrook, Nikola Jokic, and Luka Doncic seem to get one every single game and if Bird played today, he would be no different. Even though he got triple-doubles with ease, Bird is actually kind of against triple-doubles and he has a good point. In a way he's right but still doesn't take away from his versatility as a scorer, shooter, passer, and rebounder. As far as a shot creator, he was a mid-range specialist and a tough shot maker. This is why he would without a doubt be one of the best three-way level scorers in the NBA today. Not to mention he was a really good finisher who could finish with either hand. He would be borderline unstoppable on offense and I could easily see him averaging 27 to 29 points per game. Even with players being more athletic currently, his ability to hit threes and make contested shots would make even the best defenders look foolish. While we're on the topic of defense, I bet you didn't know Larry Bird was a great defender in his time. In fact, he was named to the NBA All-Defensive Second Team three times before injuries started to wear on his body. He even ranked 63rd all-time with 101 defensive rating. While defensive rating is kind of a complicated and sometimes unreliable stat, its purpose is to measure how many baskets a player gives up per 100 possessions. And he's not that far behind Claw Kawhi Leonard in this stat. When it comes to the defensive box, plus minus, a stat that estimates how many points a player gave up compared to the league average, Bird is just a few spots behind the arguably the greatest lockdown defender ever, Scottie Pippen. No, I'm not saying he was locking up players like Pippen or Kawhi out of the perimeter. But what's clear is that he had high defensive impact all across the board. He wasn't ever extremely mobile and quick laterally, but he had good enough athleticism to hold his own with wings one-on-one. -on -one. In today's NBA where offensive players are quicker and shiftier than ever, he wouldn't be the best perimeter defender, but he would be a terrific team defender. You see, Bird had remarkable defensive instincts and IQ. Compare that with his physicality and competitive nature and you have a really good defender even today. Probably his most accurate defensive comparison among active players is Kyle Anderson from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Anderson isn't the best perimeter defender due to his lack of speed, but he makes up for it with his great hands and anticipation which has won the Wolves a few games this season. Plus he has size, strength, and length to be able to defend all wing scorers and most power forwards. The same as Larry Bird. All in all, Bird had the perfect all-around game that would help him thrive in this area. The only thing that would hold him back is his trash talking. As much trash as he talked, he would get ejected literally every single game with how fast today's refs blow their whistles. What if I Yeah, man, hey. <laughs> I think so, too. A lot of people are saying in the comments of some of my videos before that he definitely will, definitely will get attacked or kicked out of the game. <laughs> But that was a good one, man. That was a good video. I enjoyed that one, man. I hope y'all enjoyed that too. But uh, yeah, man, I'm out on to the next video, man. Appreciate all love and support. Definitely look out for some full games coming, man. He definitely about to drop. And uh, yeah, man, that's about it, man. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button. Turn on that bell, man. I'm uploading every single day. And uh, yeah, that's about it, man. We on to the next video. You know, if you got some videos you want me to do. Uh, definitely leave them down in the comments and I definitely will do them and uh, Dutch T I definitely got you man oh, Wow, I think that might be a sub whenever I get a sub so if that's a sub man I appreciate you but uh yeah um yeah so uh that's about it um, that's kind of distracting me but no yeah I'm seeing full games and things like that but anyway man I'm not gonna talk too much but uh yeah man I love y'all so much man deeply appreciate all love and support and uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm out. I'm on to the next video. Peace.